Okay, let's uh, see how MacLogger DX is set up. In the last video, we installed it, but we didn't really get to set it up. I'm going to go into the Preferences. And the first tab is the Station tab, and I went ahead and filled all this stuff out. Uh, you can fill yours in. And I've got these enabled because I want to be able to use it with uh, JS8 Call and WSJTX and N1MM. And then the lookup tab, I went ahead and filled all these out. Went down the line and I'm uploading in real time on most of those. Now this is the important tab, the radio tab. Uh, the radio is the ICOM 7610 and I'm using this port. This is a SIM link, a symbolic link. And uh, normally I had been using the uh, serial port, which I get from the ICOM 7610 Discovery, and it would be this one. But I'm using the symbolic link now because in the manual it tells you that sometimes when you shut down the Mac and shut down your radio and then power them back up, the port changes. And when the port changes, the port changes in, in here. This will come up to one or two or three. It changes in there, and when MacLogger DX can't find it, it'll default to the Bluetooth. So using the symbolic link is better and easier. Now the port type serial port, and it's 115.2. I don't have either one of those checked off. I have push to talk. Uh, as the radio command is push to talk, radio generated CW, and I'm using uh, full break in on my radio. If I set DTR and then down here set this to DTR for CW, I didn't get full break in. So I've got uh, the radio generated CW and then this unchecked. Uh, the rest of this I think was the defaults. Uh, rotor tab is not important. I'm not using it. Uh, contest, I haven't been. The alarms, I'm not using. The map. All of this, I haven't changed anything in there. It's pretty much the, the default. So we can go ahead and close this out and take a look at JS8 call. Okay, now that we have MacLogger DX set up and ready to go for JS8 call, we need to go into JS8 call and make sure all the settings are right. And up here, I'm gonna go into preferences. And the first tab is the general and then the station. Of course, we have that set up. I added a few things in here since last time. Uh, behavior, I changed a few things in here. And I'll go through the rest of these settings in another video when I start making contacts. I'm still tweaking it just a little bit. But to get it going, under the radio tab, we're using DX Lab Suite Commander. And even though you don't have this installed on your computer or your Mac, that's okay because uh, MacLogger DX uh, emulates that or is, is similar to it. Uh, it's looking for this. I'm not sure how to explain it. But even though you don't have it installed on your computer, this will work. And then the push to talk method is cat. And then down below, I've got data packet and I'm using a 7610, so I'm using rig. I would normally uh, use fake it with the 7300. Now I can go ahead and hit test cat and it should turn green. It's a slight uh, lag in it. Now I can hit push to talk and it keys the radio. And when you hit this push to talk, it doesn't send any power to the radio. So don't get confused about that. When you hit the tune button up here, this will send power out. Then the audio tab, of course, the USB audio codec. Then the reporting tab, I'll show you what I changed in here. Uh, the UDP API for MacLogger DX to work, we need to have this set to 2237, and it's the uh, local host 127.0.0.1. All of these enabled, and I've got spotting enabled. I had this checked off in another video because I was just setting up, you know, I was a little bit premature. If you have this clicked or enabled, It'll try to find N3FJP logger and then it'll give you an error message. 
Now I've gone ahead and I've tested this out and I've got N3FJP on my Windows PC and when I have N3FJP logger uh, amateur contact log open it will forward the QSO to that log even though it's on a different computer. So that works. It works the same with N1MM logger. Now N1MM logger I had to change the port down here to 2237. Same as up here. So I've tested all these out and they do work. Uh, N1MM logger is of course on my Windows PC. So the rest of them Frequencies, saved messages, I've added a few in there. Notifications, I didn't change any user interface, I didn't change anything. So it's ready to go. And uh, I am connected to MacLogger DX. We're on the same frequency. And I'll show you if I change frequency here to 80 meters and go back to MacLogger DX, we're on 80 meters. So Use DX Lab Suite Commander for the radio and rig. DX Lab Suite Commander. I know that sounds a little confusing, but it's the way it's worked for a long time. So in this window, on the left hand side, I have some, well, I did have some signals coming in. I was on 40 meters. And the uh, this looks like Star Trek, doesn't it? They're uh, medical bay meters. You want it uh, around 30 when you have an open band, you don't have any signals. And I'll uh, turn my antenna switch, and it drops down to about 30. Put my antenna back on. And so that's, that's good there. Now the rest of this stuff I will go through when I do a video on making contacts. I've got my filter enabled over here and uh, that's good. Uh, I usually don't see signals outside of this anyway. Okay, well that about does it for this. And in the next video I'll show you how I've been making contacts. One mode I haven't tried is turbo mode and that's 40 words a minute. Uh, that ought to be fun. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also, tell your friends. 73 and good DX.